Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of our Selenium series and in this one we are going to see the benefits of sending keys to forms. Now what that means, it means that we are going to interact with different forms by automating sending keys like name, last name, passwords and stuff like that. So that's why this episode is going to be extremely useful. And by the way, if you are new on my channel then welcome and I hope that you will enjoy the content of this video and if so, please make sure to hit the like button and as well as subscribing to my channel. Let's get started. Alright, so the reason you want to learn about sending keys or clicking on different buttons right after it is for performing actions like login and registering accounts. And this is something very useful when you want to overcome authorization in some websites to basically performing some UI testing or creating a bot for whatever reason. So to practice this, I'm going to pull up this website again from seleniumeasy.com. So that's actually the page that we are going to try to send keys to. So as you can see in here, we have some HTML forms and actually when we want to send keys, usually we'd like to do it in HTML forms where we actually need to write in some data and then we need to click on some button to submit our data. So as you can see here, we have some form in here which asks for two values and then if we were to click on get total, then you can see that it shows us 30. And if I change this to actually some other number, then you can see that it is being updated. So that is what we are going to try to automate now with Selenium. So first, let me grab the website of this section in here and go back to PyCharm and actually say here driver.get. And the link will be available in the description for sure. So you can directly copy and paste from there. All right, so now I will paste this in and right after we have done this, then we should somehow again try to identify the element in some method by ID, class name or whatever method it will be. So I will go back to our website in here and as usual I will say inspect and you can see that we have here something that is called class which we can again find the element by its class and as well as id now i always like to filter by id because i think that this is the strongest field that is always unique so i'm going to use this id some one and i believe that the second box in here should be some two so if i check that with inspect then you can see that it is just as expected. So we need to pull those elements and basically try to send some keys to it. So I'm going to go back to PyCharm and I will say here sum1 is equal to driver.findElementById and I can use sum1 in here and I can do the exact same thing by basically copying this in here and paste this in and change the values to number two like that and then I can try to send some keys so it will be just as easy as pulling the element because now we have full access to it and basically launch the method of send keys like that now you can put here whatever you would like to as you can see it expects for a value so this could be any value that you would like to pass in here it could be a string or it could be directly a number like that. So let's go with numbers and say 15 like we have done manually. And I will do the same thing with sum2. So I will send 15 as well. And now we can actually test this out and see if it works. But not before we go ahead and say here something like driver dot implicitly wait. And it is enough to wait 5 seconds in here for each element. And now we can test this out. So if I run our program, then let's see the results. Okay, so the page has been loaded and you can see that we received this message and we will handle it in a minute. But you can see in the background that we got the values. So I know that it is a bit transparent in here, but you can actually see this in the background. Okay, so I think we got a new challenge in here as we see this output and we need to somehow perform an automation to click on no thanks to continue our automation. So this is actually a good candidate to handle things along the way. So now I can go to inspect in here and see 
what needs to be done to basically identify this button in here and click on that before we go ahead with our automation. Okay, so you can see that we got this element with multiple classes. And if I take a look in here, then you can see that we have some classes in here that are separated by spaces. Now, if you see classes separated by white space, as I said, then it means that it is referring to a different class. So I can actually try to filter this element by class name at-cm- no dash button as it will probably the most unique class name that I can try to filter this element by. So I can go here and actually use, let me copy this down and manipulate this in PyCharm. So before we go with everything in here, let me please go down here and paste this text in here. And as you can see, this is the class name that we'd like to filter by. So I will delete everything and I will cut this string from here and I will say no button is equal to driver dot find element by class name and I will paste back the class name that we'd like to filter by. And now that I have done this, then I can basically apply the click method. So it will be no button dot click like that. Now one final thing that it is a great idea to do here is to wrap this with try except block because not always we are going to find an element by this class name because maybe in the next time this pop-up won't appear. So it is a great idea to use here try and basically locate those two lines under a try block and then if the selenium is not going to find any element with that class name then it will not crash our program because in the except block we can only say something like print no element with this class name so i can say just skipping like that all right and down below i can continue with our automation exactly like that okay so if we run our program here then let's see what will happen this time so the page has been opened and as you can see now we don't see the pop-up and we don't see any message from the except block so what that means, it means that the Selenium identified the element with this class name and it immediately clicked on that button that we wanted to click on from the first stage and then it went ahead and basically executed the rest of the lines of code. And you can see that the values are right there so we are pretty close to complete the automation that we wanted to complete. Now there is one final thing that I'd like to show you before we go ahead with the get total element and I'm talking about the fact that we can send keys directly not only specifying the text that we'd like to send so what that means it means that we can send the keys like shift alt enter control and stuff like that and the way that it is going to work is by importing the keys class from the selenium and that is something useful here and there that you want to basically automate some actions that are required to maybe copy some text so you need to automate control c and again that's useful because sometimes you want to automate pressing on some key directly rather than sending some random text so i'm going to import here from selenium dot webdriver dot common dot keys import keys like that and inside this class you have all the options that are basically the keyboard keys that are existing in each keyboard so to show you that then i'm going to now change this to something like keys dot and as you can see in the drop down we have all the options so we even have f1 2 3 4 and we even have the nums that are existing in the right side of our keyboard, which is in numpad. So if we want, we can send the keys from the numpad. I know that it is not quite useful for that case. But again, sending keys directly could be very, very useful in some cases when you need them. So as you can see, you have all the options in here. And if one day you want to take a look to all the options, then you can always go here and basically use Control b in PyCharm or F12 in Visual Code and you can inspect to that class and you can see that all the options are here available and this is very very useful. Now to prove you that it will work, then let me try this with the numpad. So 
in the sum one i will send numpad one and i will also send pay attention that i can separate the values by comma and i can say here keys dot numpad five and then it will basically send 15 so it is going to be quite equivalent to what we have done and to show you that it works then i can basically launch our program again and you can see down below that the results are quite the same so that is just another approach of sending keys and the beauty behind of it it is the fact that you can send all the keyboard keys that exist out there all right so now we only have the get total button to filter now, not always we'd like to filter the HTML elements by their ID or class name. We might have some more attribute key value pairs that we can try to filter the elements by. So now I'm going to go to inspect in here and let me do this again. And as you can see, we have here an attribute that we did not see before, which is on click. Now say that I'd like to filter this element by on click equals to that value in here and this is something that we did not learn how to do till that point and this is possible with something that is called css selector and css selector is a pattern to filter an element by its styling now unlike with the methods of find element by id or class name with css selectors we don't always need to filter an element that matches an exact string so for example with CSS selectors, it is an option to identify an element by only searching a substring that it contains. Now, that is extremely useful because not always we'd like to filter element by exact key value match because we could want to perform something with elements that are having the same prefix or suffix. So let's see how CSS selectors works in action. All right, so we are back at PyCharm and let's go down and see how we can use the CSS selector. So I'm going to say here, button is equal to driver dot find element by CSS selector like that. And in here, we need to pass our CSS selector expression. And the way that we're going to do that is by using some special pattern that exists out there. Now to select an element by CSS selector, you have multiple options, but we are going to use the pattern of HTML element type followed by a matching key value. Now, as an example, we can actually go back to our button and see how we are going to filter that. And you can see that it's a type of button and we can see that from here and it has the key value of on click return total. So that means that we can try to filter all the buttons out there that are having the attribute of on click with the value of return total like that. So to achieve this, we will go back here and we will say button and then we will need to open a square brackets and we will need to say here something like on click equals and then we will use double quotes in here. Now the reason I use double quotes, it is because I used single quotes here from the beginning and we do not want to mismatch those. And now in here I can say return total like that. And as you can see, this is a one way that a CSS selector could work. You can basically specify the HTML element followed by the key value match and make sure that it is inside the square brackets right after it. Now I'm going to show later on all the CSS selector options because there are tons of options that you can filter an element by CSS selector. Okay, so I expect this button to basically have the HTML element of this button and then I can basically use button.click as expected. So now we can test if this works. So if we run our automation once again, let's see what will happen. All right, so down below you can see that we received the text of total A plus B is 30 and that is exactly the result that we expected for. So what that means, it means that we were able to select an element by CSS selector successfully and that is perfect. All right, so I said earlier that I will show you the page where I took this CSS selector expression pattern and you can see that now I'm in a page 
that has multiple examples of how you can filter elements by using CSS selector. So you can see that we have a table with all the selector options and as well as some additional examples for all the patterns. So you can see that if we scroll down, then I actually used those patterns. So this is a pattern that is containing the element type and in this example, the type is A, and that stands for anchor. And you can see that within the square brackets in here, it looks for a matching key value. But in that case, as I said earlier, you can not only search for an element that includes an exact string, you can also search for an element that contains some string. So you can see that in the description, it says, selects every A tag elements whose href attribute value begins with HTTPS. And same goes when you want to select some elements that ends with some text. So you can see that we have a lot of options in here and that is very useful. And I can totally confirm that the CSS selector is the method that I use the most because it gives you much, much control rather than the other elements. So it helps you really to find the elements that you look up for when you want to perform some automation on them. So this will close the third episode and the next episode is really what you have been waited for because we are going to start building a Selenium project where we're gonna build an online bot that will choose the best booking deals for a vacation. We will do this project object oriented and we will mix up some amazing Python libraries like argument parser and pretty table and much more intermediate Python stuff. And those things are what going to allow us to have a well-designed project that will be easy to maintain and will also be easy to extend with more features. All right, so be sure to hit the like button if you have enjoyed here and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in the next episode.